Good morning, this is Clark again with the CK team. Today we are doing a podcast with one of the uh, well-known uh, tax strategist and accountant here in the Las Vegas Filipino community, uh, Miss Ludi Magada. Thank you so much for uh, uh, coming here with us in our uh, brand new studio, Jeffrey's house. <laughs> okay, so um, go ahead with the questions, uh, <clears throat> Renee. That's awesome. Hey, Ludi, how are you? I'm good. I heard that you just came back from a six-week vacation in the Philippines. Yes, I wish it was a vacation. It was actually work and okay. vacation at the oh. same time. That's cool. Um, to start with, would you mind introducing yourself and what do you do and you know, as far as the real estate in, in... yeah. Uh, so in the Philippines, you had a you have I saw the post about beachfront properties that's uh, for sale. Um, was that the, your primary uh, focus in the Philippines aside from going to the beach? Yes, so in the Philippines, I do have a brokerage company. We sell properties, but mostly lots. And right now, we're working on a beach property, and to, uh, it's actually in Apari, Cagayan, which is you know the northern part of the Philippines. Yes. And um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 just buying our own land and and, and subdivide it and then work with the government, of course, to do all those uh, to due diligence and then go from there. Yeah, because there's this uh, expressway um, going towards uh, La Union, right? Towards La Union, all the way to uh, Cagayan. I that saw that. Yeah. I'm not really. Yeah, um, it's just not really clear yet. But I did saw something that was posted in Facebook. I'm not sure if it's it's already ongoing, but they said it's already been approved. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, talking about that, what if let's say um, someone from here goes ahead and buys uh, the lot in the Philippines and develops it and turns it? I mean, you have a beachfront property that turns it into a rental property. Um, how does that go with filing taxes here or are you filing taxes here or are you filing taxes in the Philippines or are you filing taxes at both countries? Um, you definitely not filing on both countries because like I was saying earlier to you there is a treaty between Philippines and United States where you can you can file one tax in one country mm -hmm. so if you're operating as a business in the Philippines you can file your tax in the Philippines okay however if you want to file here in the United States you can file a foreign income okay that's coming from the Philippines so on top of your um, regular tax return there will be an additional form just for the foreign income okay so is it is it better to file here or is it better to file over there I would suggest where wherever you earn the income uh -huh. that's where you file the tax return but if you're hundred percent here and then you're just operating it there in the Philippines then you should file it here because you're here physically okay gotcha gotcha yes. okay and regarding tax deductions if let's say um, let's say you you build that property or of course you had expenses in building the property of property management fees uh, in, in the Philippines can you use those as tax as business tax deductions because you're filing it here here if you do it yeah. here yes but if you do it in the Philippines they have a different way of filing a tax return okay so that's yes. uh, different ways a big question mark so it's just better to file it here then because <laughs> you're more familiar <laughs> yes right, right. but if you are familiar in the Philippines too it's okay but like okay. I said if you're 100% living here in the United States then you might as well file it here okay got yes. it okay sounds good so I know you've been uh, you do a lot of um, uh, you file uh, taxes for a lot of a lot of people here in the U.S. Not just here in Las Vegas. I mean, you you um, you have clients all over all over the all over the country. Um, take us into that. And how long have you been doing it here? So I've been doing this for almost two decades. Yeah. I, I I started in Hawaii when when I was you know I I took my accounting degree in Hawaii uh -huh. and then. I started as doing tax return only and then I got hired as an accountant and then and then the history goes. So um, yes, I do have clients from New York, California, Hawaii and mostly here. 
Um, so today I'm gonna I'm trying I'm gonna talk about um, we're gonna touch base the filing um, personal tax return and investment properties or rental properties. Um, we're not gonna touch the business side, mm-hmm. but you guys can do a follow up questions if, uh, if ever. Yeah, so. Yeah, so okay. can, I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> personal tax return, as we all know, we file it every year. It's due every a- April 15, but you you can do a um, extension. So th- there's two parts of the income tax return. So you you receive an income from your employment, different sources, and first is your employment, which is you receive a W-2. Mm-hmm. Uh, unemployment, if you have disability and stuff like that, you receive 1099G. Um, you receive interest or dividends from your investments um, at the bank, if you have stocks and stuff like that. Um, 1099B, if you have a sale, again, on the sale of your stocks. Um, retirement plans, which is your 401k. Um, you have social security as well. And um, other income, if you're self-employed, you receive the 1099 NEC. I'm pretty sure you guys are mm-hmm. familiar with that. 1099 miscellaneous is that what that's what you receive if you're having a property manager manage your rental property and we're going to talk about that more when we touch base on the rental properties on tax return 1099k that's what you receive if you're um, receiving income from using credit cards or hopefully they're not going to do the zelle yet but there is a talk right now that they might start um, doing the zelle as well okay and um, 1099 A and C, that's for canceled debt. Okay. Um, 1099 SA, sale of your primary home or any um, uh-huh. property you own. And W2G is gambling. And business investment is K1. K1, we're not going to talk about because we're not touching the business side. Okay. But if you put all this this income source together, that's what that's what your total income and that's what will be taxable when you file your tax return okay and remember i see uh, i i I get all these files in the mail and then uh, i get them like uh, one day you get this next week you get this 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 and then you never think about it until you have to file taxes then you have to like keep finding where where you place those documents yeah. <laughs> so, and sometimes yeah. they do make a mistake so they'll they'll send you a corrected form yeah. after you filed after taxes. you filed yeah. it then now you have to either amend it or just go with whatever the irs audited you mm-hmm. it's it's really up to you i got a, um i don't know if you mentioned it um it's regarding non-profit uh entities mm-hmm. do they still have to file taxes the nonprofit, yes yes what so it, it what? is it's not called a of taxes so what what the nonprofit do is every end of the every tax return which is also april they have to um they have to put together the source of income of the church or what, whatever the nonprofit. So if it's coming from donations, fundraising, they just have to put that together and send it to the IRS in a different form. It's not a 1040 form. Okay. So, so it's, it's it's just telling the IRS this is where we get the money from. Yes. Okay. So they have to put their financials together first and then and then report it to the IRS. Um, yes. If they haven't done that for how many years? Uh... <laughs> yeah they can yeah uh, yes okay. i i do have client like that uh-huh. uh here in las vegas and yes they the, you will get a nasty letter from the irs mm-hmm. saying you will have to do this otherwise we have to we'll cancel your your 501c one organization okay correct yes all right word to the wise <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah okay <laughs> well let's proceed uh with the okay so the income part we did um we're, now we're going to talk about the expenses so as we all aware there's two type of expenses there's a standard deduction and itemized deduction so the standard deduction is a specific amount that the government that the irs is actually giving to all the taxpayers based on your filing status so for 2023 the the single filers um they're i have to remove my glasses because i can't see um the single filer, the standard deduction is thirteen thousand eight hundred fifty, and then married filing jointly is twenty seven thousand seven hundred, and then head of household is twenty thousand eight hundred. So how does this work? 
you take their income all the income that we we mentioned earlier you deduct all this um this standard deduction and that's where your taxable income based on your tax bracket okay so if it's let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars um is the income for the year minus the thirteen thousand six hundred uh for a single filer and um, then the difference that's where you tax, get your tax bracket that's the tax oh, okay the tax rate uh -huh. okay gotcha. has the standard deduction been going up it changed every yeah. year due to um due inflation. to inflation okay yeah. yes so, so it, it's going to change again next year for whatever the running bit. press did yeah. this right <laughs> yeah because i remember when i was single it wasn't really much now that i'm married because of course there's like a separate you know i mean filing jointly yes it's a higher it depends, it depends yeah. on your filing status i don't yes. think it depends on whether you're single or married though yeah they have the stand. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a long time okay got you got you okay <laughs> but yeah the standard deduction i remember was much lower then mm -hmm. so it has been going up mm -hmm. yeah so that's what we call the basic tax return filing yeah. okay. is if you're using if you're using the the standard deduction mm -hmm. but now if you use the itemized deduction uh -huh. this is your personal deductions that you have and the this is a, li a little bit um, it's a little bit process of a process because you have to gather all your information and put it as an expense report okay. so and the itemized deduction we use itemized if you have more than of the item of the standard. standard so for example for single if if you have um, itemized deduction a total of 15,000 and the single is only thirteen thousand eight hundred fifty. You use the itemized. the itemized because you have like over a thousand more to deduct from your income. Okay. So on the itemized deductions, um, the this expenses that you can deduct is your home, of course. So on your house, you have a mortgage interest that you receive every year, and then you have the mortgage insurance or PMI. You can't deduct the regular insurance. <laughs> the home insurance is just a PMI. And then the um, the property tax, okay. and of course, if you have any home energy credits, the government is giving credits for people that will put energy on their homes, such okay. as solar, mm -hmm. heating, or you know anything that save you energy. Okay. Uh, and the next one is children. If you have children, you can get child credit. You can have dependent care credit. So if you have someone watching your kid they can uh, you can use that as your as your itemized deduction however if you do that you have to have either a social security or a federal id number from whoever is taking care of your kid in order for you to do you it. also have to show that you're giving them money to care for your child no, no you don't but once if you get audited you will provide a invoice or any receipt coming from that facility or that company or, or you right or you yeah so you can just do a handwritten so okay. like if it's a personal but like again like I said if you do that so you have to have a corresponding social security or federal ID number okay in okay. order to use that um, and then earn income credit earn income credit is also based it on based on your um, on your income okay. donations you can have donations um, you can have vehicles, your car, registration. Um, if you bought like a energy efficient car, you know, you have credit. Tesla. Yep, yep. Um, you can also have education such as the tuition fees and interest that you paid for your loan after you gone to school. Okay. Um, medical expenses, you, any tuition, uh, any not tuition, I'm sorry, any premium. The insurance premium that you paid out of your pocket, those are taxable. Um, prescriptions, medical bills, like um, for example, you went to the doctor and you paid twenty dollars copay. That copay is is tax deductible. Um, sales tax. So a lot of people don't know about the sales tax. If you buy something here in the United States, you pay a sales tax. Right. Those sales tax can add up. So if you add those for the entire year that you've been buying things those are tax deductible especially if you buy big pro big products like furnitures right. and eight percent of that is the sales tax 
um, retirement and investment contribute if you contribute in your IRA that's also a tax deductible so is it hundred percent deductible it's the, not okay. it's not hundred percent yes okay. it's still it's ba everything is based on your earned income okay and um, also employment expenses for teachers only okay oh. yes back in the days everybody can can you know uniform and stuff like that you can do that but going no, for just teachers. Just teachers. Yeah. Nothing just for nurses. Not at this point. Not at this point. No, I mean you buy like those expensive scrubs. Yeah. That, you know. <laughs> Isn't it provided by the hospital? No. no? The, Only if no. you're in the operating room. Uh, okay. Yeah, your scrubs are being provided because they have to be they have to be um, on the placed on the they have to be dis disinfected, but oh. mostly uh, your scrubs are are your own. Interesting. Yeah. I thought everything. Because I know um, dry cleaning, you can put that in the itemized before reduction. Not not right now, but not you anymore. can put that on the business side if oh, you're a self-employed. Oh, we're talking about yes. business. If you're yes. Okay. Um, and then there's also some miscellaneous expenses such as tax preparation fees, like you pay me, uh -huh. you can put it in there. Um, moving expenses if your if your company is moving you from one place to another, the expenses that's not that's paid by the by the um, by your company that you paid out of your pocket is is deductible. Alimony if you have alimony, legal fees, and and there's many more on that miscellaneous okay. expense. Um, expenses that's so that's that's the personal that's, personal that's the personal okay well the, uh, the the biggest takeaway was the uh for mortgage uh, if you're paying mortgage um uh the 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 money that you pay for interest uh, pmi and property taxes are tax deductible uh, if you're paying rent uh, it's not tax deductible unless if it's a business Expense Correct. There. Yes, but, but for personal, you're not. You're not. You couldn't deduct the rental payment towards uh, towards your uh, taxable income. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. some state they do have a small credit. Okay. For for if you're renting and you're like a low income or moderate income, they give you like fifty dollars credit for the entire. It doesn't matter how much money you pay for your rent. They okay. will just give you like a. Minimal what about there. any improvements you do for your uh, to your house to your home? If it's a it's primary energy. home, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, it's if, if it's your the house that you're living in, mm -hmm. but if it's your rental property, that's a different story. Okay. Yes. Um, for primary, uh, for for a primary home, like what if these are energy, uh, like energy efficient yeah. upgrades? Are those? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anything that will save you energy, energy bills is yes. Like AC, low for. windows. Okay. Geothermal, um, okay. water heating, stuff yeah. like that. Um, they oh, also have blinds too. Then blinds. Yes. So blinds. Um, shutters can yeah. also because that the shutter help help the heat to go inside. Yeah. So you know, also counts towards the landscaping when you're like doing a, a desert landscape instead of the one that consumes the you know water that I think that's the yeah. SSWA the, that that's the credit fall toward okay no they, they, I think that one they would give you do they would give you the credit right away I do have a client who asked me about it they said uh, he messed up the form when he deleted his grass and then court and then according to SWA they sent the credit to the uh, towards his property taxes so I told mm. him to call the uh, okay, call the Clark County Assessor Office then to verify. Okay. That. Yeah. So. so that's probably on the state side. Yeah, that's yes. yeah, that's on the since that's on the since side. Nevada don't have a state, we're only dealing with federal tax. Yeah. Then okay. yeah, they they will have to deal directly to yeah, um, yeah. state to the, okay. like the assessor's office. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, very educational. All right, very good. Um, okay, so now we're gonna touch base um, the rental property tax, which is Schedule E. So on your personal tax return, there is uh, 1040. Behind it, there's schedules. There's Schedule A, there's Schedule E, there's Schedule C. We're, we're just gonna touch base the Schedule E because that's where the rental property is. Now, if you are um, operating your rental property as an LLC, you can use a Schedule C which is pretty much the same it's just it's a business versus just doing it like a personal in the personal basis okay 
So the Schedule E, I actually printed a copy for everybody to see. Ooh. Um, so it's, can they see it? Yep. It's right yeah. here. So this is the Schedule E. Okay. It is your, this is your tax preparer's name and then your social security. So you can have multiple properties in one form. Okay. So you can have rental one, rental two, rental three. And then you have the rent received. You can receive it as cash from your tenant or if you're having the property manager manage it, like I said, you receive a 1099 miscellaneous. Okay. And that's what it goes here. And then these are the expenses. So the difference between personal and this, you can directly deduct the expenses from the income. For example, if you have advertising, you can deduct it here. So the total income less all the all expenses, okay. which is advertising, you have auto mileage if you travel from one place to another, cleaning, maintenance, commissions, insurance, legal, management, and the list goes on. And there's the depreciation that you talked about ah, earlier. Yeah, right here. So what what is depreciation? Depreciation is um, the useful life of your asset, of your property. So when you have a rental property, the IRS will allow you to, um, to have a depreciation expense. So the depreciation expense, the most common that we use is called straight line depreciation. So what happened is um, we divide the, the cost basis by the properties using the useful life. Mm -hmm. So what's the cost basis? The property cost basis is the initial the initial amount that you paid for the property when you bought it uh -huh. plus whatever um, whatever improvement that you did so that's the useful basis now the useful life is 27.5 for properties for other mm. assets like vehicles is like five to ten years but the property the house alone is 27.5 so how do you calculate that it's for example the house is 206,000 including all the improvement you divide that to 27.5 it's equals to 7,490 and that's what your allowable depreciation expense every year until the 27.5 is over Okay. Because at the end of 27.5, the, the depreciation value is zero. Okay. Yes. So 27.5 from the time the house was built or? The time that you started using it as uh, a business. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's a long time. Oh, yes. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing with that is that there is no, you don't have to do anything else. You just have to allow time for it for a year. And you get like this $7,000 for a 200 something thousand dollar house. So it's like a magic, uh, magic money. It's a deduction, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you're making money from your rental, I mean, instead of paying extra on that seven thousand dollars tax, then you 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 just That's right. like you said. So when you a, said it gets deducted straight away from the income. From the income, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the expenses that I mentioned here, including the depreciation, right. it the total expenses you deduct it directly from the from the rent so for example you have a hundred thousand rental income per se for the whole year um you have fifty thousand of expenses then you you minus that the fifty thousand that is the taxable income mm -hmm. that fifty thousand will flow through your 1040. Okay. so in this schedule you don't receive refund you don't pay anything because mm -hmm. it flows through on your um on okay. your, yeah and your so personal say, tax yeah. um the first one or two years the 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 house is probably not making that much money yet it's possible that they're negative do you see that you know the first yes because yeah, like especially the first year yeah especially the first year correct so yes. let's say uh there's a certain individual uh so he does so he files for personal and he owns a rental pro he just owned a rental property mm -hmm. um Let's say he's negative on that rental property. Uh, does that reduce towards his taxable income? Yes. His W. That's uh, correct. Okay. Yes. So on your personal income, did I print? No, I did not print it. On your personal income, there's all your sources of income. And if your schedule E is minus, mm -hmm. instead of adding it, it's going to deduct it. Mm -hmm. So it, it will deduct that first and then minus either your standard or itemized and then at the end of the the bottom number that would be your taxable income yeah 
which is uh, that's the question among a lot of like uh, and a lot of nurses they make two hundred thousand dollars a year and then they end up paying like five six seven five to fifteen thousand um, dollars to the IRS every year and they're pissed about it you know because those that's like three Louis Vuitton bags you know? <laughs> um, so my advice to them is just <laughs> my advice to them is buy a rental property because yeah. you know all the deductions that you're making if you're paying taxes based on an income of rental property maybe you're not you're not filing taxes correctly maybe you have the wrong accountant um, so so if they if they are able to uh, you know contact a great accountant like Ludi and them oh, thank and you. they're able to yeah and they're able to deduct uh, that amount of money that should reduce towards their taxable income yeah all right, all right. okay gotcha moving on <laughs> so I think that's it for schedule E okay. and then um, for schedule C like I said if you decide to have an LLC instead of just doing us you can report that on the schedule um, on the schedule C and okay. I printed a copy as well um, of that just for references um, it's uh, so much... this is where you uh, put claim that property into an LLC correct yeah. yes so you actually you don't even have to quit claim you can just add it as a, a beneficiary okay you, yeah on your on your loan and on your tax oh. in your insurance okay you have to put it on your insurance as well yes okay. so um here's the schedule c here's instead of putting your name as a as the owner the llc goes here LLC. Oh, okay. yes and then the federal id number of your company instead of your social security okay but it, it works the same way the income you have the income all sources of income all expenses including the depreciation and then the calculation goes on okay and i know i have mine on, on an llc yes it was it was done by uh, by a lawyer and it was advised to me that to Placing it on an LLC, especially for rental properties, protects to you legally in case you get sued by a tenant. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I, I just had a client from California that called me yesterday. Um, he's renting out his property, so he asked me, "Do I need a um, do I need a tenant uh, LLC, LLC, or can I just do it on my own?" So I said, "It depends." Mm -hmm. If you're renting it to your daughter or your, you know, someone yeah, yeah, that someone you trust, you know. then yes. But if you're renting it to just anybody, then I would, I would suggest because, like you said, it's your protection. Yeah, it does have a cost for yes, LLC to does. make it, and annually. every year annually, and you have to renew its, uh, its, its license. So, and there's a tax uh, and taxes for it. There's an extra added expense when. The accountant files taxes for that LLC, so it does have a cost, but these are also tax deductible, deductible. costs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On that topic, I wanted to ask: when you mention a tenant might, you know, got you, you, you know, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. For what reasons? Let's say uh, they can say that you are not doing, uh, you are not doing what you're saying on the contract, like you know, hey. Um, the AC is not working. Mm -hmm. They can say that the, they can claim the AC is not working and they didn't do anything, making the house not livable, that they have to go to a five-star hotel for two years. Um, sorry. They have to go to a five-star hotel for two months while the AC is not being fixed. And they they wanna they want the cost of that, that hotel to be charged to you because you didn't provide them. Okay. You didn't provide them a livable house. That's just just one example yeah or Got it. you know it could be if someone falls they went to the hospital and they can say hey this hospital bill cost me a hundred thousand and now i can't go to work so you have to pay compensate me not being at work yeah. so they can come after you now if you have an llc Gee. they can come after your llc but not because it's protecting not you, you personally, personally. Yeah. yes yeah. Yes. Yeah, if they say that uh, the, the, they fell because of the house, uh, or they say that yeah, the 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 angle of the stairs is too steep, or mm -hmm. you know the the handrails are is not very secure, something like that. And to follow up to that topic, people ask, do you need um, one LLC in each property? If you have more than one rental property, or you can just have one LLC on all. With what I said earlier, if they if something happened and they come after you legally, if that LLC owns several properties, whatever it owns, they can go after. Yeah. So I suggest to have 
one, one LLC series LLC. Each. Per, yes. Okay. Series LLC is what they call it. The series Some LLC. Some people call it mother daughter's LLC. Okay. Yeah. You can do that too, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So that's it for Schedule C. If, if there's any follow up, we can go over the possible changes for 2024 yeah. tax return. So, what might change? Uh, I know it's it's election time, so there's going to be <laughs> also changes yeah, in taxes and immigration, depending on who's, who's running and who's going to win. So, <laughs> okay, so the first changes is for the possible standard deductions. It's going to go up, like I said, wow. it goes up. So, from single, it, it, it started 13850 for 2023, it's going to go up to 14,600. For married filing separately, it's the same. Um, filing jointly married from 27,700 to 29,200. And head of household from twenty thousand eight hundred to twenty one thousand nine hundred. So the most, actually, the most changes is on the married filing jointly. Hmm. Okay. Yes. okay. Married filing jointly. Okay. So stay married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't file separately yeah. as much as possible. So child tax credit it will increase from sixteen hundred to about nineteen hundred or two thousand. Up to what age the child can be used? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yes. Has it always been sixteen? Because I've heard no. eighteen. No. No. I've heard twenty-one. That sixteen change um, took two three years ago. Two three years ago. Yes. However, if you have a dependent over sixteen. You don't get what you call the child tax credit, but you'll get a dependent, dependent. credit, which is five hundred dollars. Oh, okay, and yes. a dependent to define a dependent over. It's someone that you support. Someone okay. that, like your mom is living with you. You can have him, your dad, or your mm -hmm. mom as a dependent. Um, if you have a cousin that lives at your house, okay. that's also your dependent. Okay. Yes, family members, Pets. not for a friend. Oh, <laughs> pets. No pets. Okay. Either. Sorry, <laughs> pet. pet owners, because you keep saying your uh -huh. your pet is your kid or whatnot. You and can't use them. <laughs> and let's say uh, retired. Someone's retired, and um, they're living off pension, and they're living off uh, social security. Uh, at what income are they required to file taxes? If their income is less than four thousand eight hundred a year. A year. Okay, then but they don't. But anything have to over file. than that, yeah, they, they, they have to file because the government is saying they can support themselves. Yeah, we want my cut. That's what yeah. Uncle Sam says. <laughs> Four thousand eight hundred a year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so what if they li they're living in in the Philippines? Do they have to come here and file taxes? Um. No. 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 You can. There's this thing now that they're starting next year. You can actually go to the IRS website and you can file your own tax return. If it's just a very it's simple, just very, yeah, yeah. yeah, or you can do it manually. You can have the 1040 form that that you can download from the internet. Uh -huh. You file it, and there's UPS, there's FedEx in the Philippines. You can okay. mail it directly to the IRS. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Okay. So hoping for a positive change yes 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 and then tax bracket also okay is gonna change so um so let's just tackle the the first one anybody that, that for single that that makes eleven thousand or less in 2023 it was a tax rate of 10 percent. so you get taxed at 10 percent in 2024 if you make eleven thousand six hundred and less that's 10 percent so in this scenario in 2023 if you made eleven thousand, you tax at uh, 10 percent um but actually no sorry so if you make eleven thousand six hundred, you tax 12 percent because that's already over the eleven thousand. in 2024 if you make the same money instead of being taxed at 10 percent, you get taxed at so instead of 12, you get, get tax 10. So it's lowering your your tax okay. bracket. Is, it, is that a good thing? It's a good thing. Or yes, uh, it is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And what's the highest uh, tax bracket? 37%. And that's for how much? Uh, this is for, for, for 2023, 500 single, 578,000 and up. That's 37%. <clears throat> Married filing jointly is 693 and up. In 2024, 
it's from 578 for single it goes up to 609 okay so and then it, for married filing jointly from 693 in 2023 it goes up to 731 so again same scenario in 2023 if you make um 609 30 as a single 609,000 yes okay. so you're you're paying um 37 percent you're paying yes it, it's capped in 37 okay. percent okay. everything but now you're making more and you're tax less okay less tax bracket well, if you're making six hundred thousand dollars as a single and you don't have 37. a property to reduce your taxable income then that's your fault <laughs> yeah, yeah. the 609 minus your standard deduction yeah and then 37 percent wow yeah. for our audience i would like for you to explain the tax bracket the schedule oh yes because because um i just recently found out that let's say you make over four hundred thousand. this was years ago and you get a tax bracket but then um the amount below that is a different tax bracket and then yes. so on and so yes. forth so um for example let's just use 2023 as an example okay. Um, if you're married filing single and you make say forty four thousand, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what happened is you the forty four thousand, you less whatever your standard deduction the remaining. If your if your standard deduction is twelve thousand, you're still in this bracket. You're still in this bracket between the, eleven to forty four. So twelve percent. Twelve yeah, twelve percent. So it's based on what you make. Okay. Yeah. Taxable income, not not the gross. Okay. But, yeah. But, so you deduct the deduction first, either itemized or standard, and whatever your taxable income, you go to the IRS website. They have a um, bracket schedule every year. It's updated, and this is. How so you would, can tell? What I wanted to ask is, you get taxed at twelve, up to when it's the eleven, you get taxed ten, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. not for the like I said, the people listening, when they say you get taxed like a, a bracket of twenty four percent, it doesn't mean that the whole income gets twenty four percent. You know, you go by the, the by what? The how taxes. much you make? How much is your taxable income? You go like get 24 between this and then 22 on that amount yes and then as you go down you get taxed less and less correct yeah that's correct yeah. yes because so it's yes. not like the whole from zero to and it changed every year because if, if I mean your income it could fluctuate from one year to another so your tax bracket could change and what I usually tell people because they're like, oh, am I taking out enough? You can predict, you can make an estimate. You can go to the IRS with what you make now times whatever you're, if you're bi-weekly, you times it with you know, 24, whatever, right? And then you, let's, you just assume that you have your standard deduction because that's the worst scenario is a standard deduction. If you itemize, great. But, and then you come here and you can estimate how much tax they should be taking out from your paycheck. If they're not taking out enough, you can go back to your HR and tell them, can you please, you know, withhold more, more of you, my tax, my tax from okay. my paycheck. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. All right. So that's the tax bracket. More changes to come. Um, this is the retirement. So for the IRA in 2023, for 50 and below, ages age 50 and below, um, the limit to contribute on your IRA is 6,500. It's going to go up to 7,000. Okay. So this is the pre-taxable, okay. you know. Retirement. Uh-huh. And then anyone 50, age 50 and above, 2023 um, was 7,500. It's going to go up to 8,000. Okay. And for 401k annually, it's going to... From two twenty two five hundred, it's gonna go up to twenty three thousand. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. so that's a good thing. And then there's a lot more, but th this you can find it on the IRS okay. website. Yes. So. So you know, we don't let's say if someone like me, self-employed, and you have a self-employed pension, is there like a limit as to how much uh, yearly you could put in? Yeah. So four, 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 three, four. I believe it's twenty seven thousand for twenty twenty three. Oh okay. for a self employed, yes. Okay. 
and that's not 100% tax deductible too, right? No, it's, it's also based on your um, earned income. Okay. Yes. Gotcha, yes. gotcha. Okay. And so, if you look, there's also a foreign earned income. Foreign earned that income. We, we talked uh, about earlier. Gotcha. Yes, yes, right here. Okay. So, yes, gift tax increase. So there's a lot more changes coming up. If you guys want to see it, it's open for public. You can see it at the IRS website. Okay. Well, the reason why we're talking about uh, taxes is because um, I know it's, this is a hot topic starting January. It's already, uh, and um, we've already, uh, the filing season has been done, although except for those with exemptions. I think they have till October. October. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. okay. And a lot of businesses do have exemption, uh, do file for extensions automatically because they have complicated, uh, they have complicated papers, paperwork. And uh, that's what that's what makes my job good. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't stop in April. I still have work all the way till yeah. October. <laughs> yeah, but your busiest time is from January to April. Oh right? yeah, especially April. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. That's why you don't take vacations then. You no. take vacations so after. after April yeah. April fifteen, I was gone for a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a stressful time yeah yeah um so um so yeah but uh especially if you're self-employed and even if you're uh, coming from a w2 and you want to you want to do uh you want to do rental properties it's accounting i mean especially if you started with one rental property the simple accounting of all receipts and having things organized having one bank account dedicated to that rental property will be a good um uh, will be great and practice, when, yes. will be great practice yeah. when you file taxes later yeah. on yes. like you know all the utilities on that card all the expenses on that card repairs from that card that way when your accountant uh, uh files your taxes for you they don't charge you a lot extra for your bookkeeping because you're bookkeeping mm -hmm. it yourself yeah correct yes yeah. yes Cause... and i do tell my client that that if you have business with, like even like a little gig on the side mm -hmm. And because a gig is a self-employment, so you're gonna file a Schedule C. Mm -hmm. So it, it, in order for you to, it, you know, save you from headache at the mm -hmm. end of the year, you just use one credit card or one bank account. Just for and that just, gig. Just for that gig. Yeah. So you can just give away your bank statement, like you said, to your to your accountant, or you can do your spreadsheet. Much easier. Yeah. Much yeah. easier. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, W2 employees who are looking to do that uh youtubers mm -hmm. youtuber stuff they have you know bloggers yeah bloggers and they're online also financial sellers. advisors you know and they're also online sellers so yeah you know account for it make so, sure it's yeah from what i understood every time you wanted to do like a side gig you gotta get like a a, a license a permit depends you don't yeah. Have to. yeah you don't have to, you don't have to. Yeah. yes but however, I, I say this, if you have a gig and you want to make your intention is to make income, um, you have to make you, you're allowed to lose to have loss yeah. for for three years consecutively, because after that, the IRS will just take it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Then you won't be able to file it as a Again. Schedule C. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so loss, 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 gain, loss, 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 gain. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, if you know, we see reports as to how billionaires are having a ten thousand dollar income only for the year. They have a great accountant. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, well, a very common thing that happens, especially within the Filipino community too, is to get audited. You know. Because they don't get, file taxes properly. <laughs> or they go and do some, you know, find like the guy on the street, like told him they can do their taxes, yeah. make you more money. It's <laughs> well, uh, well, that's the thing too, because <laughs> um, paid less. Yeah, paid a, a lot of times if you're trying to, um, if they're trying to withhold the uh, stated income because they think that they'll be taxed. Yeah. Um, the thing is, with how our taxes are are structured right now, if you do file taxes correctly, you will you will uh, you will not have a problem yeah, with, uh, with with that. But they have it the opposite way. Yep. Which is why they're having they're getting audited because they're and, not filing taxes correctly. And also they're adding some Additional. phantom numbers in there. Like I lost this, 
I went to school here, I lost this, I made a business here, I lost this. Yes. But in reality, you know, they just went yes. to work. So I, I don't know, advice to uh, people out there is if you do, go to... Uh, if you do um, expense something, make sure you have a backup receipt right. or documentation because audit is not happen because you make a mistake. Right. Sometimes the IRS will do a random audit. For okay. example, they use the last for social security and they just take the guy and boom, you get audited. Okay. And if it's your lucky day, your name got picked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. be careful. Be careful. Good stuff. Okay. Okay. Is there any parting words to our viewers, uh, at the Ludi? Um, oh. thank you for having me, and for for the people that's watching, please buy properties. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy properties <laughs> in the Philippines. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, and, and tell us about your uh, the uh, re very recent business you opened up the um, the home healthcare or is it the oh yes independent living yeah. so I have I I I have a facility where we do have independent living people in the house tenants we call them residents mm -hmm. so these people are able to go do everything on their own so they're pretty much just living at my facility and then i have a 27 24 7 caretaker watching them helping them whatever they need okay. feeding them and cleaning the place and stuff like that so i do have rooms that are shared in a less you know less amount of money or i have a private private room as well for people that you know can afford to pay more money okay. but right now i have one available for female and two beds for males okay so gotcha. yeah. awesome. and uh where is it located at? it's actually right around this area so 9108 okay northwest yes. Yes. all right very close to the freeway very accessible 95 okay. yes awesome. close to 95 okay yeah, it's good. Uh, living. reviving these types of businesses because i remember Years and years ago, there's a whole bunch of them pops up, and then everybody, you know, got hit with the recession and all that stuff. I know. But th that's good. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much again, Ludi, and thanks for tuning in for our CK Team uh, podcast. Um, this is Clark Get On with the CK Team, Renee Vistugay, and Ate Ludi Magada. Thank you again. Have See a good you guys. Day, everyone. See you next week. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>